Take two. Welcome to the most must-see WWE talk show in history. Welcome to Ms. TV. And yes, we are live on Facebook Live. We are right here. We are today in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And, you know, with the debut of Ms. TV on Facebook Live, you never know where it's going to be, what's going to happen, who's going to show up. But today, I wanted a huge debut. And who better to have as my guest than the current Intercontinental Champion, the Lunatic Fringe, the star of the WWE Studios film, 12 Rounds 3, Lock Down. Ladies and gentlemen, it is none other than Dean Ambrose. Thank you very much for being here on the debut show. Oh, well, hopefully it goes a lot better than uh, Miss TV usually goes. I know. Uh, I'm, I'm like hoping it's a much safer set. It's very safe. There's no audience except for the people live in in our in our little uh, camera right there. So this is going to be very smooth, very easy. Uh, but there will be hard hitting questions. But I want to talk about your movie. You're in your debut film. How was it doing filming that? Uh, it was a great time. I'm very proud of 12 Rounds 3. That's why I promised that, you know, we're not going to get out of control or rockets or anything on this episode of Miz TV because I don't want to break this poster because I want everybody to see, you know, me holding a gun and how good that looks. And I don't want to break the DVD right? because they're, they're, they're gonna, these are going to run out quick for the holiday season, you know what I mean? And this Definitely. is my only copy, so you want to go run out and get it before... Uh, before it leaves the stores, you know, so. Of course, uh, though, they sold out great I stocking did. stuffers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were, were you, uh, I really like, did. You this know. is the third one now, and uh, John Cena did the first, uh, Randy Orton did the second, this is the third. Did you feel that you had to bring something special to 12 Rounds 3 because you had John Cena as well as Randy Orton, and now it's you? Uh, really, I didn't feel uh, any pressure at all, because I, uh, I never had any inkling of any... Uh, idea that I would ever, I never had any uh, particular desire to go act or be in a movie or anything. It was an opportunity that was presented to me, which I jumped all over. Cause, you know, would you do it again? Oh, for sure, yeah. I, uh, I had a hunch of feeling that I could be, that it's something that I could be okay at, and uh, otherwise they might not have brought that opportunity to me, but I figured if I suck, then just don't ask me to be in a movie anymore. <laughs> and if it's good, then... You know, maybe that's an, another option to explore. But I ended up uh, having so much fun making it and uh, just getting to go in every day to work. And, you know, I mean, it, it's hard work. Like, you mm -hmm. know, it's 14-hour days, whatever, you know. We're How many days did you shoot? It was six weeks straight every single day. So, I mean, there's a lot of hard work put into it, but it's fun, you know, just going into uh, work every day and getting to be a G.I. Joe. But you have no live audience. It's not like WWE where you get people cheering you, booing me, of course. But, you know, did, did you find that a little difficult or did you find it kind of nice and at ease? Because when people are booing me out there, it makes my job a little harder. But when I'm in uh, a studio a set and where I'm basically doing a movie, you know, people aren't booing me or cheering me. It's kind of nice. Yeah, that, there is a big difference. On the one hand... Uh, it is, it's a lot more, uh, acting can be a lot more intense mm -hmm. because it's very stripped down and it's not as, uh, you know, you're not playing for the last wild guy and, in the, wild and, and off the cuff and so forth, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's just kind of you in your own mind, you know, you might be the only person in the scene or just you and one other person and, uh, uh, you know, everything you can, and the camera picks up everything. Yeah, every little like minute you thing. drop, and you know you don't want to make any mistakes, so you can overthink instead of just you know learning all kinds of you know, uh, you know, kung fu knife fighting and stuff like that. That I don't know, you know, get to learn how to like you know ninja roll. With, with Did you already know how to like hold that? a gun and kind of go into and do all the kind of stuff that you need to do as, as yeah. a cop as you play? I mean, have target shooted, you know, trap shot stuff like that, but like you know. Clear, learn how to properly clear a room and, you know, do whatever, jump over the table and tuck and roll and, you know, do all that tactical stuff, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, that was cool to actually learn, you know? Uh, and Down, what is it? And killed, and I got shot. And uh, I've been going through, um, you know, post-traumatic stress treatment and so forth. And uh, a lot of people at the precinct thought that I was at fault for the incident that happened uh, before the movie starts. And I come back on my first day, and uh, there's, and I happen to discover uh, that there's a big uh, ring of, uh, you know, bad guys. Con you know, contraband moving, mm -hmm. and you know, a, uh, you know, there's a lot of corrupt cops doing a lot of corrupt things. And I uh, fall upon that evidence, you know, before my first coffee break and the first of my first day back at work, and uh, you know. 
know, before I can get out of the building, you know, we'll set evidence. The building gets locked down. That's why it's sold on three lockdown. And I'm in there, uh, locked in a building with, you know, 12 uh, machine gun wielding bad guys or so. <laughs> and I have to shoot my way out. All right. And uh, so with, uh, with, Mar with the Marine as well as uh, all the movies that I've done, I've done a lot of pre pre preparing. Like, I'd watch a lot of movies. Like, to get ready for the Marine 3 and Marine 4, I would watch a lot of action movies. I watched, you know, The Good, The Bad, The Ugly. You know, I'd watch, like, kind of diehards. Did you do any of that to, to, to get into this role for uh, 12 rounds? Yeah, I think I immediately started, you know, watching all kinds, of, like, I can't remember the exact ones, but just immediately started walk going back and watching a bunch of action movies just to... You you kind of remind me of John John McClane in this like uh, Bruce Willis in Die Hard. It kind of has that kind of vibe to it. I don't know. Yeah, very, gotta be a very uh, very similar uh, setting mm -hmm. to Die Hard, you know. So, uh, but it's the greatest action, like one of the best action movies of all time. So of course, I mean, and can't, so can't go wrong, you know what I mean. But uh, you know, uh, you never want to you know, go out there and try to pretend to be in wrestling or in movies. Try to go out there and pretend to be. You know, somebody else and just rip off somebody else's stuff. But uh, I remember going to, uh, after we started filming, I learned a bit more about how the process works and uh, you know how stuff is shot and everything. Then going back and watching a lot of action movies and then having a whole new appreciation for uh, for how they look and stuff. And because I can I can imagine how they're being shot now from like the other side of the camera. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I think the, the main thing though was in preparing was just like. Uh, I didn't want it to be, uh, but Dean Ambrose plays a cop. Sure. You know, I wanted to, you wanted like, to whatever, be a different character. Whatever, you wanted to show something, another side of you. Yeah, whatever this person that uh, I was going to be asked to portray, which is uh, Detective Shaw in this in this movie, and he's got all this you know, baggage and so forth, and he's got his own personality that's not necessarily uh, the same as mine. Uh, I wanted people to be able to buy that I was this person. Mm -hmm. I just feel like they were watching a skit on a and you know, you you excited about watching that? It used to be like you know people would watch like Home Alone and you know Die Hard. It would always be like a big Christmas time movie. Sure. But I think now we can all watch this year. We can all watch Santa's Little Helper. Follow it up with Twelve Rounds Three Lockdown. Boom! You heard it there from Dean Ambrose. Thank you very much. This has been 